Hi there, I'm Matt McGemory. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of Illinois for Pioneer. Today I'm in the southern part of the territory that I serve in, and I'm in a field of alfalfa, and I'm scouting for alfalfa weevil. That's one of the first insect pests to get press time in the Midwest each growing season. And it's one of the two that we tend to talk about a lot when we talk about insect pests in this crop. The other one is potato leaf hopper. About the time of the first cut, the baton will be passed off to potato leaf hopper, and that will become the dominant insect pests more years than not in the Midwest. Now, before we talk about this pest and we talk about how I'm going to go out here and get a feel for the stage of development, and I go out here and get a feel for how much leaf injury I'm seeing, let's talk about the pest itself. Alfalfa weevil overwinters within the state of Illinois. It overwinters within the Midwest, and it does so above ground. Now that means because it's above ground and because it's here for the winter months, that if we have a mild winter, we increase the chances that we're probably going to see some kind of pressure that requires management. If we have an intense winter, we probably do something to pull back the risk associated with that pest as well. Now, along with that, when we first observe this pest, it's rather small. Most insects are but this is very small and very hard for you to get an eye on. You have to be a really good crop scout and be very vigilant to actually spot this thing as it gets started. You can do it. You have to take an alfalfa stem, carefully pull back those leaves. You're looking for leaves that have pinholes in them. And if you're careful, you might find that thing nestled down toward the axle of those leaves where they're connecting to the stem. You might find them nestled within a bud as well. They're gonna be very small, pale yellow with a black head, less than a sixteenth of an inch almost. Very, very small insects when you spot them that early. Later on, it's not going to be so easy or not so hard, I should say, to watch out for that pest because they're going to grow in size. They're going to get green in color. They're going to have a white stripe down the back. They're going to have a black head. And that pinhole feeding is going to move over to out and out leaf skeletonization. And you can imagine the problems associated with that. Leaf skeletonization is gonna to reduce tonnage. And the other thing is it's reducing that succulent leaf material and therefore remains a lot more or provides or increases the relative amount of stem material, stemmy material in that mass. So it, re it reduces quality of that hay as well. So there are two reasons we wanna watch out for this thing. Now, nature oftentimes does a good th job holding this thing in check. We know there are predatory insects, like predatory stink bugs that can prey upon alfalfa weevil. We know there are parasitoids, certain wasps that will attack this thing about the time it goes into the cocoon stage and will help pull back that population as well. It really has its own version of a pandemic, believe it or not. There is an enema pathogen, a fungus that infects alfalfa weevil that can sweep through a field like this and can reduce that insect into a mass of fungal spores that can help reinfest that field as well. Those are great tools and mother nature does a nice job oftentimes helping us hold that pest in check, but they're not foolproof. And because of that, we have to be ever vigilant at this time of year to make sure that we're watching for this thing to see if they're getting out ahead of natural controls. How am I going to do that? Well, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bucket, go in a U-shaped pattern throughout the field, collect stems, beat those around inside this bucket, get a feel for how far along those larvae are. Why am I doing that? Because if those larvae are too far along, they're gonna be right on the verge of forming a cocoon, I should say forming a pupa. That means their feeding injury is gonna be over. And by the time I get out there with an insecticide application, they're off the scene. The other thing that I might wanna do though, is go out here, find out if they're earlier than that, and then also get a feel for if I'm finding somewhere around 40% of these stem tips being skeletonized, being damaged by alfalfa weevil. That's a lot of pressure. And when we see that amount of pressure, we're getting our signal that natural controls just aren't keeping up and we're going to have to do something. That can take one of two forms. That can be the application of an insecticide or it can be an early cut if we're far enough along. Because if we cut early, it exposes those to the sunlight, 
exposes those to other things as well, and that reduces that population and helps get it under control. We have to watch a little bit for the regrowth to make sure that alfalfa weevil isn't feeding on the regrowth. We watch and make sure that within that next week we're seeing good growth, nothing that's being held back. But those are really the management techniques that we would talk about for this pest. So that's alfalfa weevil, the first pest to get a lot of press time as we go into the spring season, managed by nature oftentimes by these natural controls that I mentioned, but sometimes not managed and therefore requiring that we are constantly vigilant scouting out in the field to see if we need to do something to help this situation out. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.